Sometimes the controversy created a form of public protest. I confronted Paul McCartney with reports that there might be segregation at their Gator Bowl concert in 1964 in Jacksonville. He made it clear the Beatles wouldn't stand for it. I think it'd be a bit silly to segregate people because, you know, I mean, I, I don't think uh, well, colored people are any different. You know, they're just the same as anyone else. But, you know, over here, there are some people who think that there's animals or something, but I just think it's stupid, you know. Yeah. You can't treat other human beings like animals. And uh, so, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind them sitting next to me. Great, you know, because that's the way we all feel. And a lot of people in England feel that way, you know, because there's never any segregation in concerts in England. And in fact, if there was, we probably wouldn't play them, you know. There was no segregation at the concert in the Gator Bowl, but there was high winds caused by Hurricane Dora, and John Lennon felt them. Did it really bother you the other night? Yeah, well, you know, we've never been through a thing like that. Was, we were most sort of awkward, but all our hair was blowing up. We all looked like four Elvis Presleys or something. Yeah, we just felt uncomfortable with all that wind. A highlight of both tours was Hollywood. The Beatles were dazzled by visits with Hollywood stars, the concerts of the Hollywood Bowl, but disenchanted with some of the superficiality. You're about to go on stage, and there is one thing I want to ask, because I'd like to get this in. We're out in Hollywood, and you stayed out in the house out there, and you met so-called, some of them, Hollywood starlets and actors and producers and directors. Now, to me, this is the first time I've ever been around a crowd of uh, a lot of movie stars, let's say. And to me, there was a basic difference between you, and I'm not trying to analyze, and them. You were natural, and they were not. Especially some of these uh, uh, young actors and actresses who claim to be stars, you know. What do you think about, do you think this world out in Hollywood is phony? No more phony than most of the sort of acting or film world is. Uh, all the act actors and film actresses that are genuine. People know the genuine. You know, they come across, they're the ones that are natural on screen. Everybody knows, you know. But there's so many of them that aren't natural, and that's just the way of it. You know, you get, but well, we get used to meeting them. We know they're not natural. We know that maybe they're trying to be natural. But they just don't work, you know. They're just sort of phonies. Yeah. 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 Really yeah. well. we, we met, I think, we didn't, well, I didn't meet too many sort of stars of that in Hollywood, but I think the nicest fellow, I did meet was Bert Lancaster, you know, he's, he's a great, and he's so genuine, you know, and he's with his family and his wife, and we went round to see a movie. I think it's even something like he's saying now, like Bert Lancaster's genuine, sounds like a sort of show business, sort of actors or film stars, cliche, but it isn't, mm. because the people we meet and we don't think are genuine, we either don't meet, or we don't mention on tape or interview, or we, you know, we tell them that we're lousy. Yeah, but we, you know, we can't sort of on tape mention all them phonies we've met, you know, which none of us like, you know, so we only, the, the trouble with us, we only have one great, well-known film actress we met, as well. Yes, yes, she went to the club too, folks. Um, you've read about it. I don't know, no, what, they what read about the wrong one, but there's one of them oh. who didn't seem to get a mention, although she tried so hard, oh, you see. Which but caused all the trouble, actually, because she was flashing around and wanting photos and that, you know, for publicity and that, which is silly. But um, somehow it didn't work. And in 1965, they met Elvis, a summit meeting of sorts, a three-hour jam session. Some of it surprised George. What are your immediate reflections on your visit last night with Elvis Presley? Oh, uh, great, actually. I liked it a lot, you know, because I didn't expect him to be half as nice as he was. I understand he gave you guys a whole box full of records. Yeah, we asked the Colonel when we saw him the other day for um, Elvis's very early albums, which are deleted, I think, now in England. But they're the ones we liked, so he gave us a parcel each. Did he meet up to your expectations as far as a person? Or? He was more, he, he was a bit more than I anticipated. In what way? Well, um, I expect him to be quieter and for him not to have a, such a, uh, an amount of noise in his house. In fact, when we walked into his house, it was exactly like going into ours. You know, it's great, just the record player, TV and electric guitars all playing all at once, you know. What did you do over there? We all... Well, we had drinks, some played pool, some were playing roulette. We, we were playing electric guitars and playing records and watching TV, everything, you know. It was good. Did you have any uh, serious discussions about music? I talked just a little about asking him why he didn't record some of the, the older stuff or something like in the old style, because we thought that was much better. And he, he, I think he seemed to want to do something like that himself, you know. But we didn't really talk much about business things because 
you know, it's it's quite hard, you know, meeting people like that. Hard for him and us, you know, it, it's a bit embarrassing. But, you know, so we lay off and talk about different things altogether, like other people and other records, you know. John, how are you? Fine, thanks, Larry. How are you? We're pretty good. Uh, what did you think of your, uh, what were your immediate reflections of your meeting last night? With Elvis, it was great, you know, because we were all a bit nervous and he was a bit nervous because it's sort of embarrassing meeting people for the first time, especially if you want to meet them. Did you find him like you thought you'd find him, the type of person? Yeah, you know, he was he was just sort of as normal as you can be in that situation. You know, he was just like us. Tell me something, what are your immediate feelings and reflections about uh, your visit last night? I just loved it, you know, and it was it was just great because he was a great guy, you know. He was no big sort of showbiz thing, you know. Not that we ever thought he was, but you never know, you know. You meet people and suddenly, you know, they're not like you expect and you don't like them anymore, but we, it was great. We had a good time. Did you discuss music at all? Um, we didn't sort of have any big discussions. It was just sort of general talk, but music and records got into it, you know. We sort of like similar records and he likes ours and, you know, we were telling him which ones of his we liked and things and talking about different points and, you know, and watching TV and doing everything, you know, it was a good night. Were you guys nervous before meeting him? A little, yeah. I honestly think we all were a bit sort of, but uh, the thing is he was too, you know, so we were all in the same boat. Paul, uh, what are your uh, immediate reflections about last night, your meeting with Elvis Presley? It was very nice, Larry. Very nice. I had a good time. Uh, he's a nice fella. Just what I expected, in fact. And uh, we tried to persuade him to make some new records like the old records so we had a good we had a good laugh a few drinks uh, rocking and rolling playing the instruments and a uh, bit of billiards bit of roulette roulette I had a great time yes yes gambling away lost i lost of course <laughs> i always lose you know terrible when you say uh, you try to persuade him to make some new records what do you mean uh, by new records well records more like the old sound used to be you know the wilder records that he had because those are definitely our favourites, you know, we all love them. And uh, we think that he hasn't made any as good as that for a long time. And, uh, you know, I think he tended to agree a bit last night, because we were just saying it'd be great if he, if he got into a recording studio and did some completely new tracks and released them as his singles instead of uh, film songs off albums and things, or, or old songs that he recorded two years ago. And so I think we persuaded him, I think he might do it, you know. I hope he does because I'll be down to my record store with my shilling in my hand. The road managers, Mal Evans and Alf Picknell, were overwhelmed at seeing Elvis Presley in the flesh. I understand uh, Malcolm Evans, uh, one of your road managers, is quite an Elvis fan. Did he get a kick out of it too? Yeah, well, Malcolm has been in Elvis's fan club for years and years, and he's got every record he's ever made. And, you know, he's just sort of grown up, and he works for us, but he likes Elvis more, you know. <laughs> and when he met him, it was, I think, the biggest thrill in his life.